little um, do a little in intro, then we'll go into it. All right. Hello, welcome to the Need to Know Music Show uh, here on Switchbox TV with me, Rona McManus. Today I'm joined by Jeff from the Muckers. They're a five-piece Celtic punk band from Atlanta, Georgia. They blend many different styles in with Irish music to make their sound. They're known for their raucous live shows and the pure energy coupled with catchy songs on their albums. Um, welcome to the show. Jeff, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me, Ronan. I really appreciate it. Uh, especially with a former Bible Code Sunday. I know you've been on the scene, so... Uh, it's, it's yeah, I mean, nice this is something. You. Yeah, this is something that um, I've fronted the bank called the Bible Code Sundays. Um, we were kind of a London um, Irish band, basically um, doing very much similar sort of stuff to what to, to what you do, and uh, and a band that you were formerly with the Gobshites. We've done gigs with the Gobshites before, yeah. and you were a Gobshite. As many would say, I still am a Gobshite, but I'm not <laughs> in the band anymore. If that's the question, yeah. Well, it. well, yeah, so we, we did, a, my band, we did a few things with drop kicks and uh, played with the Tossers and a few bands. So um, it was, uh, it's fantastic to, uh, to, be, to be chatting to someone from a, I do a lot of different styles on this show. So it's nice to be on home, home turf. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah good, good to be home in, home in your comfort zone again. <laughs> yeah, uh, absolutely. So how have you, um, have you found the last sort of six months or so, the very strange kind of world we find ourselves living in? Um, uh, how have you found it? Well, um, I, I am very thankful. Um, you know, we're uh, all five of us have day jobs, so thankfully, you know, it's the, this was not our sole source of income, and we're all able to to still survive. Okay, I do have to tell you, we missed the stage so badly, um, but we're all doing our best. Just you know, wearing masks and staying home and doing everything we can to hopefully get through this and. Uh, you know, it happened, it just had to happen right before St. Patrick's Day when we were set to, you know, have all our big shows and make the big, you know, all the, the big money for the year. And uh, thankfully, we still had enough uh, in the band fund to finish off the album. So we did get to put out our third album this year. But for the most part, we're, we're all surviving and we're just dying to, to get back on stage again. Yeah, I mean, for those that, that don't, aren't familiar with the Celtic punk scene, um, it's a very strong scene. And I've always been very, I mean, I know me and my band, old band, were kind of very jealous of the, the infrastructure that's in place. Um, we've spent a lot of time mainly in New York, Boston area, the sort of yeah. Chicago, and there's a, obviously a massive Irish community in that part of America. Um, what's it like down, I and mean, we never got as far as Atlanta. Um, we, got very, not, we never, didn't get very far set down south. What's... What's it like down there? Are there are there plenty of bands around there? Um, I mean, what's the what's what's the scene like? Well, uh, one of the things that happened, you know, the the way I got into the Gobshites in Boston, and uh, I was in several uh, groups up there. I was in the Poor Men as well when I lived in Boston. Oh yeah, I'm um, still yeah. on still on great terms with both of those bands. Love Pete, love Richie. We um, played with them both on our summer tour last year. Um, but when I moved to Boston, uh, I had never, I, I had fronted a small band in New Orleans when I moved to Boston. And I just put up a Craigslist posting saying like, hey, I'm a fiddle player with a specialty in Irish music and uh, I can do some singing, anybody want me? And within 24 hours, I had to just tell anyone who responded to that, I have too many in me, I can't even consider it because everybody <laughs> in Boston wants a fiddle player. Uh, especially an Irish fiddle player. So when I moved down to Atlanta, I did the exact same thing, and it was crickets. Just absolutely no responses whatsoever. So I said, I realized there were no Irish rock bands in Atlanta. So I'm like, well, now I can be a big fish in a small pond, and I started the band. And, you know, now if you want Irish rock in Atlanta, there's, you know, really only one, one, thing, one place to call, and it's us. Um, so, I mean, it was, there was a community down here, but it was underserved. Um, so it ended up working out great that, you know, all these people that wanted that type of music, but didn't have it here, we were able to fill that gap. Um, so I've, I've been thrilled with how it's worked out for us. Yeah, I think we were kind of, there wasn't, I mean, 
in, in London it was a similar sort of story. The Pogues kind of, kind of, there wasn't much came after the Pogues in terms yeah. of uh, in terms of big bands over here, and we kind of wanted to be the kind of dropkick Murphys of the of the yeah. London scene for the London Irish thing. But there just isn't really the infrastructure in place uh, for it. Um, there's plenty of Irish bands now around across the UK, and obviously the big Irish communities in Glasgow and Liverpool and Birmingham. There are there are good bands coming, and actually we were doing a gig with the Gobshites when a band formed in front of our very eyes, two guys from London decided, decided when watching us in, at a gig we were doing with the Gobshites in Boston, um, <laughs> that they were going to form a band. And that they, they became the Lagan, who were who, um, yep. who very, very well known. Yep. Yeah, so there's, um, but there's a really strong, really strong scene. I mean, I, and what is great is that you find that it links up across different cities and different countries, and you end up connecting with guys from Australia and. Germany and all sorts of places and uh, I mean do, have you managed to get out of America and get and get around um, get around the world obviously in normal times not uh, not, not yeah. in this current world but did you manage <laughs> to get get yourself on the road a bit uh, we get on the road we've stayed uh, um, so far um, you know and it's something we've talked about and it's just such a matter of getting the planning together and getting the money together and making it happen. And I think we're starting to get enough of a foothold that I think somewhere in the next two to three years, I would not be surprised to see us do uh, a and you know, just get a nice Euro tour together for that. Um, so that that's, to say it's in the works would be exaggerating. You know, we don't have anything getting booked yeah. just yet, but it's something that we're sort of building, building ourselves up to. And it helps too, we have a lot of friends. You know, we've had, uh, we've booked shows for the Peelers out of Canada. We've played shows with the Rum Jacks and the Ghost Set, both out of Australia. Um, yeah. You know, so we're just building that network and getting friends who might be able, you know, what do I know about where our music is gonna go over well in London? I don't know anything. But I can now. I've got people I can shoot a Facebook message over to and say, "Hey, where where can we where are we where can we go that people are going to like what we do?" Well, Mike, uh, I think we've got a mutual friend in Mike Birmingham, uh, mm -hmm. based out of New Jersey. Um, yep, sure do. And he's he's got very much involved in the scene, and he's he's very good friends with us. It's kind of how we got involved in in the, in the music scene was. Uh, uh, was he just basically helped us out by driving a tour bus for us one year? Then loved it, and then kind of got. And he's really good at what he does, and and he's a good man to, to help out. And, and you know, we'll always help you out this side of the water if, in any way we we possibly can. But there's some great guys. I mean, with the likes of Shine Onions, John Murphy, and Paddy Rock Radio over over the years, that really do sort of they really do make those connections and keep everybody in, and keep everybody in touch with each other's music. Um, and that's fantastic. Do you mean, have you done much with the got with the with the Shine Onions um, with, with John and with um, yeah. with Pack Rock Radio? Yeah, I actually met John when I was playing with the Poor Men uh, and Justin Keenan from the Ghost out, out of Australia um, was coming over. He he didn't bring the whole band that time, but I think he was sort of testing the waters to see how they would do here. Yeah, I think Mike might may have been involved in that show. Mm -hmm. I think he was involved in that. Yeah. Yeah, and so I met John then, and uh, I think he's done a review of uh, all three of our albums. And I mean, I've known Shite and Onions for many years because um, my first band was a spinoff um, from a band in Buffalo. They were called Jackdaw, and John absolutely loved Jackdaw. He would put them on all when he was still doing mix albums, you know, a compilation yeah. albums rather of I all the Irish. I bands. know the name Jackdaw. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's, I knew Shite and Onions from that. So when I actually got to meet him and start giving him albums to review, it was great. Um, and we're, we're pretty tight with, um, Phil from Patty Rock Radio. He, um, he booked us for an online festival. Feels like maybe two months ago, we did that, a live streamed festival. Everybody, you know, us from our basement, so, you know, somebody from the living room. I think, uh, Finney from the Mahones did it from his living room. Right, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, we, I met Phil a few years back now. Last time we were in the States, um, we were up in the Catskills and Phil came up and said hello to us. We did a little interview with him, him there. He's a great guy, isn't he? Yeah, he's, he's wonderful. Yeah, we, we met, I, I had met him before, but the whole band got to meet him when we did um, 
uh, Music Fest, which is in Bethlehem, the hour or two outside of Philadelphia. And they have a huge 10 day free music festival. Um, and we, God knows how or why, but we got into it and Phil came out, you know, I've been talking to him for years. So that's right in his backyard. So he got to come out and see us do our thing and uh, hang out a little bit after the show. So what the, um, uh, how do you, when you get started recording stuff, you've said you just released a third album, but I want to bring you back to the first, the first album. I mean, what was that like getting that off the ground where you were? I mean, did you find there was a good response to it? You were saying before there wasn't a huge, uh, there, there was, there was a, uh, an unserved Irish community. How, how did you find that was received, changed from having the album? Uh, that definitely helped. We, we, you know, we knew pretty early on we were getting, uh, it, thankfully in Atlanta, it seems relatively easy, you know, to get some of those starter gigs. You basically find a band that you think you'd be a good opener for and find out the right person to talk to. And there's a couple of venues in Atlanta who are willing to roll the dice on an unknown in an opening slot. And really once that started going and, you know, at that point, all you have to do is show up and prove you don't suck. Um, and <laughs> thankfully I think we did that. Uh, <laughs> And then, you know, that leads to the next gig, which leads to the next gig. And then this pub hears of you and now you're playing there every two or three months. And, um, but we knew pretty early on, like we needed recorded music because a lot of people down there don't know, you know, you can say, yeah, I kind of like Flogging Molly and Dropkick Murphys and that'll give people the general idea, but we really needed something that, sh that we could hand out and show who we were. Um, and I mean, at that time we didn't even have our, we didn't even have a drummer. Uh, we had the, the our, our friend who's done all our recording and mixing uh, is a fabulous drummer and he had subbed in with us a few times. So he just did the drums for us on that album, even though he's he's kind of like the Pete best of the muckers, you know, he's, he's the sixth <laughs> mucker. Um, and, you know, at, at that time, that's all we had to work with. Um, but he did a great job, made it sound beautiful. And then we had something and then, you know, you play more shows, you sell some al albums, you get some t-shirts and you just build and build and build. And then, you know, you get more money to do an album a little better of the second time and, uh, you know, really spend some time with it and give it some loving attention. And it's just been, I, I know there you can hit plateaus and I'm glad we haven't really hit a plateau yet. It just seems like we keep finding new fun things to do, new songs to record. Um, so it's just a matter of, you know, if you're not growing, you're dying. So just keep, keep writing, keep recording, keep coming up with new stuff and have fun. Oh, just cut out a bit there at the end. Sorry, just, cut, just, uh, just missed the end of that. But I was going to say there's a, there's, a, there's a real tradition within the Celtic punk um, uh, world to kind of really mix up covers, uh, old yeah. songs, because there's some is so many old Irish songs to, yeah. to, to, to read. So many to choose from. <laughs> and you, there's always a real mixture of, of new songs uh, and then covers. You can, people take rock songs and Irish them up and Irish songs and rock them up. And it's a real, I mean, how do you go about choosing the songs? Do they, do they, do they I mean, for, from, from your own point of view, you're obviously, are you writing the songs that you do? And then what, how do you go about choosing the covers? Uh, it tends to be pretty organic. Like uh, one of our biggest songs, uh, it's on the it's the first song on the second album. Uh, it's by a band called Deer Tick. I think they're out of maybe Providence, Rhode Island, or somewhere in New England area. Yeah. And um, I literally there's a big festival down here in Atlanta uh, called Shaky Knees, and I didn't know anything about Deer Tick, and I just went to see them because uh, they were on the big stage and sure, let's go see what this band's like. And they played this song called Let's All Go to the Bar. And I'm like, that's a Muckers song. It's, you know, it's, <laughs> it's three chords, there's call and response, there's gang vocals, you know, it's sure they're not Irish at all. But I listened to that, I'm like, that's, that is made for us. And yeah. so uh, I made sure I put it together everybody gets together in the basement, we play it through a couple of times, and then it's usually put to a vote. Um, you know, everybody like this one, we want to keep it. Great, we keep it. Um, and a lot of times it'll be, you know, we've started covering Salvation by um, the Cranberries. 
And that was yeah. one where it just seemed like every time we were driving home from a gig together, that would come on the radio at some point. And I'd always go, oh, man, we should really cover that. Steve the drummer would go, yeah, we should. And then a few months later, we'd be driving home from a gig and Salvation would come on and I'd go, man, we should really cover that song. Yeah, we should. <laughs> and then finally I'm like, this song's only three chords. Why are we, let's, let's just cover the song. Why, are we, why do we keep talking about it? Yeah, I think some songs kind of they kind of uh, act like a kind of a persistent dog, kind of like just yeah. just, just just at your at the, the bottom of your trousers, like Arr. yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, you want to play me. Yeah, how many more hints can I drop now here? You know, so, <laughs> so the uh, with the exactly. with the song Which, by the way, sell. Sorry, it's just. I, I was just going to joke that if you're wondering where I get my beautiful singing voice from, it's. Oh, it's cut out there. We've lost you. You've frozen. Oh, <laughs> oh sorry. You froze. Sorry. You can you hear me? It, it just froze on your on your cigar being out there. It's got a really cool, <laughs> a really cool shot. <laughs> it, uh, whoops. I was going to say it's yeah. a fairly sizable cigar. You might must be doing fairly well as a band. Yeah, exactly. It's, it, it doesn't cost as much as it looks like it costs, I promise. <laughs> it's just really close to the camera. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it sticks out a few inches further than me, so it looks bigger than it is. <laughs> I must try and learn that trick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so with, your, um, with your original music, I mean, are you, are you writing yourself? Is it a band effort? How do, how do you go about uh, so far, I've written most of the, the music itself. A lot of times we'll all pitch in on lyrics. I, I really don't consider myself much of a lyricist. You know, I, I do it and then I'm always like, man, you know, everybody hates their own stuff, right? Um, yeah, so you're, worse, but, you're our worst critic. Exactly. So I, I usually am not super satisfied with it when I get done with it, but then I put it out to the band or I'll even have a couple of gaps and I'll say, hey, you know, somebody help me out with this stuff. Um, and usually they're, they're happy to chip in. A lot of our tunes were actually co-written with Richie from The Poor Men. Um, uh, okay. And I always loved that partnership because Richie is a fabulous lyricist. Um, and so I would, you know, have a riff or some chord progression and I'd come in. I actually had an instrumental. Um, it's called Eddie Connors now. And it was an instrumental I used to play with my trad band in New Orleans that I had written. It was called Caravan to the Coast or something like that. Um, and I played it for him. I'm like, dude, would you guys be interested in playing this? And he said, yes, but I think this is a punk song about Whitey Bulger. And oh, right. we, we left after practice and he came back the next week for practice and he had a full lyric sheet. And he's like, see, I told you that was a punk song about Whitey Bulger. And I'm like, well, I'll be damned. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So have you, have you, with your new album, what's the, what's, uh, how did that come about? Tell us, because obviously there's, it's been sort of strange times. Um, you have, you, you mentioned earlier, did you finish the album in lockdown? Uh, we had finished all the recording before lockdown hit. And so it really was just in mixing and mastering by that point. So it's almost like a, you know, a relic from the before times a little bit that happened to come out <laughs> during, uh, during quarantine. Um, and it's, it's actually a little more cover heavy than we normally go on our albums. We have, I think, four songs that are fully original. Um, and then we did a couple of rewrites, rewrite the lyrics songs, um, which is a classic gobshites maneuver. Uh, you know, <laughs> may, make it something different and funny. Uh, but we really just sort of, there's so many of the songs we do that we're just so in love with that, you know, we'll, we'll pay the royalties, you know, to, to be able to put these songs out with our stamp on them because we just yeah. enjoy playing them so much and want to share that. Yeah. So what's the plan with it? I mean, it's, 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 I'm, I'm assuming it's out and it's available now. People will we'll put some links on the YouTube video so people can see, can, can, can click that and go and check it out. Um, what's the sort of plan with it? Have you done some video? Have you, have you been able to do any videos or any promotion for it? You know, we're, um, we, uh, music videos is one of the things we've been absolutely meaning to do and haven't gotten around to yet. Uh, we just need to, you know, link up with some some of our videographer friends and come up with concept and do it. Um, we we have been 
that is, if we had one big hole in our self-promotion, um, I think that would be it, that we just don't put together proper music videos and things like that. We do have a lot of live videos, and we did a lot of live streaming. Um, we did when the album finally dropped. Um, we got everybody together on a Zoom call just like this, and we would talk about the song, how it came to be, why we recorded it, who's singing it, because we do. Uh, you know, I'm the, the main singer, but I only sing about 75% of the songs. Everybody in the band sings lead on that album, at least oh, for cool. one song. Um, Brilliant. So we did that, and just, you know, it was everybody's first chance to get an app on it. Um, but music video is definitely in the works, just, you know, it's like herding cats sometimes, just to get everybody's availability get everybody in the same room come up with the idea get the videographer go and shoot it um and you know we're lazy sometimes so <laughs> no, I, I definitely get that I mean, with the bible codes you're a six-piece band so we all have lives and jobs and wives and kids and and uh it's it's tough to get ever ever to, you know, to get every, everybody in the same room i don't think we ever we hardly ever did any rehearsals we kind of did everything on the stage <laughs> and it's just <laughs> i mean it makes for some uh seat of the pants kind of gigs sometimes and you know any uh, energy uh levels have to be high to, to to maybe you know make up for the uh for the, for the lack of knowledge of the songs <laughs> but it's, yeah but how have your um so what's your sort of plans going forward for uh, i mean uh, i mean i've a gig, a gig started to open up there. Yeah, I mean, we're talking now uh, mid-August now. Um, so, I mean, here things are starting to open up, but it's not easy. I mean, what's it, what's it like over there in, for, in terms of live gigs? Uh, well, Georgia has done a uh, fabulous, fabulously awful job of um, handling this whole thing. <laughs> so, uh, and we're, we're pretty cautious. Um, you know, we, we've had opportunities where we just didn't feel comfortable um, going there and playing the show. And, you know, everybody's health is paramount. And so we're just, and a lot of us have relatives who are in their sixties and seventies, and we just don't want to mess with it. Uh, we yeah. have, we are going at about a gig a month right now, uh, set up for the immediate future. And they're all outdoors distanced, you know, they, they all meet. Uh, if anybody voted no, it would be, you know, if any one of the five of us said, I'm not comfortable with it, we wouldn't do it. And in all these cases, we've all looked at the, the venue and we've looked at how they're spreading their tables and we've said, yes, we're willing to do that one. Um, so we are getting back out there a little bit by little bit. You know, we, we lost our summer touring, but um, we'll play locally for a couple of shows. And hopefully by early 2021, we can start talking seriously about St. Patrick's coming back because um, that, that was heartbreaking to lose. Imagine, that. The, imagine the size of St. Patrick's 2021. I mean, that's going to be, that's going to be two, two St. Patrick's and rolled into one. It's going to basically going to go off. Uh, that's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, the summer festival scene is massive in, uh, in, 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 uh, in the U.S., isn't it, across the country? Yeah. There's so many big festivals, and um, I know a few bands that kind of, it didn't even do much outside of that. Just every year they went on the road in the summer. Yeah. Um, that must be a huge loss to the, to the scene. Yeah, and the, it's a great time for us too because, you know, June, July, August is absolutely miserable in Atlanta. If, if, uh, if you don't know the geography of the United States, that's well south, um, you know, and uh, this summer, of course, was lovely and mild and would have been perfect for lots of outdoor shows and we couldn't, you know, couldn't play many. Um, but summer is a great time for us to you know shoot up the coast i'm i'm from buffalo new york which is way up north yeah you know more famous for our snow than any our snow and our chicken wings than anything else mm -hmm. um and it's a good excuse you know we get to go on tour see my family get some cooler weather and then during the winter is when all the bands from the north are trying to get out of the winter and they come down and see us and we'll set up their shows and we'll open for them and, you know, it's a, a nice exchange, which that's something I wanted to mention earlier, too, about the, the Celtic rock scene. One of the things I absolutely adore about it is that it's so, it, it's not small, but it's so niche, but that leads to such a brotherhood among the bands that do this that I just feel so close. Um, I think it was last year, just before St. Patrick's Day, 
a friend of mine called and said, hey, we're going to be coming through. We're looking for a show on, I think it was March 13th. I said, that sounds great. Let me find something. Um, that was uh, uh, Mickey Rickshaw out of Boston, I think, was looking to come down. And then Hoist the Colors out of Los Angeles hit us up and said, hey, we're coming through and we're looking for a show on March 13th. And I'm like, I've got just the thing. And then Flatfoot 56 out of Chicago uh, was coming through at that time. And the person who was booking that show hit us up and said, hey, would you guys be willing to open? I said, not only would we be willing to open, I've got two other great touring bands, touring Irish rock bands. And we just absolutely blew the windows off the place, total sellout. It's one of the most fun nights I've ever had. And it was, you know, that camaraderie where I, you know, there's no bad blood in this, in this sector of music. Everybody just loves each other and wants to see everybody else succeed. I mean, we, we wouldn't have, I mean, I could definitely vouch for that because we wouldn't have made it out to, to the States uh, if it hadn't been for the kindness of people setting up shows for us, hosting us, looking yeah. after us, letting us sleep on their floors um, and filling us for a drink. And uh, we had some of the best, I mean, our, our wives and girlfriends just didn't believe that we were actually out there doing anything other than just having a fantastic time. And we yeah. were, if it was just, <laughs> but, but it, I, mean, I definitely could vouch for the, for the hospitality that we were shown on our, on our times moving around. From that. And all the, all, the, all the other bands, they just help you out, they lend you equipment and whatever it might yeah. be you might need to get the show done and just and all end up in a party together at the end. And it's just, uh, I have to say, it was just like home from home when we come over there. So um, I could definitely yeah. vouch for that. And I mean, even with the Rum Jacks coming all the way from Australia, it was just, you know, they came over and it was just immediate brotherhood, everybody getting along, you know, hey, come on up and sing the song with us, you know. And, <laughs> yeah. you know, and these, these guys, those guys are huge. You know, they're playing gigantic festivals all over Europe, but they come to, you know, little Savannah, Georgia, little coast town and, they're it's like they've been your best friends for years you know everybody's just so hospitable in this in this style of music absolutely 100 percent. yeah well um i'm gonna move actually moves us quite nicely onto the recommendation part of the part of the show we always ask everyone for um, a recommendation because this is the need to know music show so you know we want your recommendation of, of of a band that maybe people may not have heard of or you'd think should be should be checked out and i know it's going to be tough to keep this down to below 50 bands because yeah. um, <laughs> you've got so many friends in the scene but um yeah try and try and pick try and keep it in single figures <laughs> uh I'll, I'll i'll do my best um uh, i've already name dropped as many as i possibly could right uh, you know <laughs> yeah. rum jacks hoist the colors um the peelers the mahones um, all, all my old bands, of course, I, have, I still love those guys and have to promote them. Uh, Jack Mahone out of Buffalo, um, the Poor Men and the Gobshites in Boston. Um, there's just so, oh, the, the Narrowbacks out of New York City set us up oh, for a great guys, show. Those guys are crazy and they're a brilliant band, aren't they? Yeah. Well, that, that's just like to prove the point I was mentioning earlier. Um, you know, we happened to play uh, Shamrock Fest in Washington, D.C. with them years ago. Um, and we were looking for a show in or around New York City. You know, we didn't really meet them. They're much bigger than we are. But I just shot an email to their general account, and I'm like, hey, um, if you guys would be interesting, interested, rather, um, we would love to, to do a show in New York City. No hesitation. He's like, yeah, we'll get you in at Orleans. Uh, we'll, we'll play the show with you. It'll be a great time. And this was a Monday night. That a Monday night that started at 10 p.m. and these guys had to drive from the Bronx, which I'm sure you know about traffic in New York City, had to drive from <laughs> yeah. the Bronx to come down and do this show. And, you know, they they hardly knew us at all and just bent over backwards to make it happen for us. So got to sh got to shout out the Narrowbacks too. And um, Crack out of Cleveland and 1916 out of Rochester, New York. Um, we did some touring with those guys. Fabulous, fabulous music. I'll, I'll stop myself there because uh, I, could, I could run you out of time just talking about all the bands I love in this scene. So have you guys got plans for any more? You mentioned live streams before. I mean, where could people check out um, your... I mean, do you have, do you have, do you have any plans for live streams or do you have any recordings of them that people could go and check out? Uh, we have a couple more festivals coming up, but they haven't been announced yet, and I don't know when this is going to air. So I don't know if I should say what they are, but we will have a few more 
um, live stream festivals coming. Um, and I think one of the things we were talking about doing is do the, um, for the ones that are pre-recording, get together, do the pre-recorded set, and then um, just, we're already there, we're already in costume, we've got all the sound and lights set up in, in my gorgeous bunker underneath my house, uh, <laughs> uh, also known <laughs> as my basement, my unfinished <laughs> basement. Uh, why not just do a live stream while we're down there anyway? Um, so that's the plan. And er early in the uh, pen, in the quarantines, I was just doing my back deck because April and May are gorgeous in um, Atlanta. So I literally just sat up on my back deck uh, about 45 minutes before the sun went down and then just play some songs. The sun would Amazing. go down. It would switch from, you know, the natural light to the, to the patio lights. And I had a great time, had plenty of, you know, all the people that come to our shows were in there putting in requests and had an absolute blast with it. Yeah, I did a very similar thing. Actually, I did the St. Patrick's, St. Patrick's Day was the first time I went live without announcing. I just went, I'm like, I need to do some singing on this day. So. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm then, going nuts um, not singing right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it turns out everybody was at home with a pint in their hand. So it was perfect, you know. And, then, yes. uh, and you see all the names coming up. You see all the requests coming up. And it's all their interaction. And it was just absolutely, I kept it going and did every Tuesday. Uh, I'm, still, I'm still doing it now every Tuesday. Um, but it's, it's just fantastic. So how can people, uh, they follow, they just follow you on your, on your socials. We'll put the, we'll put the, the social media things on there. What's the, what's the best place for people to find out all what's going on with you guys? Uh, we tried to, you know, use all the social media in the way it's meant to be used. So if you're looking for where to see us live, Facebook is probably your best bet because they have the event listings. Uh, if you're looking to just see our beautiful faces, Instagram's there. And if you're looking for me getting snarky, Twitter's your place. Uh, and we've, you know, if you want to hear the recorded music, we're on everything, Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, Google Play. Um, and Facebook is usually where we stream live from rather than Instagram, just because uh, um, we, you know, our, our demographic tends to be more on Facebook than they are on Instagram. So that's just yeah. go where the people are if you want to play for them. And what's the new album called? Uh, it's called Irish Goodbye. Irish um, Goodbye, right, fantastic. By the muckers. And look, uh, thank you so much for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you. And let's, let's keep in touch. If you need to come over to London, you know where I am, just reach out and, and, say, and say hello, and we'll, I'll, I'll put you in touch with I, people I, over I, here. It'd be great to see you. Be careful about that offer, because I am going to take you up on that. So. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, thank you so much for joining us, Jeff, and good luck with, good luck with everything you're doing. Good, good luck with, with your new album and getting back on the stage sooner rather than later thank you ronan really appreciate you having us on we, like great to meet you finally and um really really appreciate you uh you helping boost our signal a little bit fantastic thank you jeff take care thank you too